external resorption is something that's the exact opposite. So it is basically occurring on the external aspect of the tooth. It is initiated, they think, by odontoclasts. So these are things that differentiate from macrophages. They come in and they start to eat away at the outer surface of the tooth, resorbing it almost like bone would be resorbed. So in deciduous teeth, osteoclasts are actually eating away at the roots. And it's a similar type of thing in this process, only we don't want it to happen. Now, the interesting thing is that cementum is actually really hard. So it's much harder than bone, which helps to kind of fight off this process. And it also has a natural ability to prevent the formation of vessels nearby. So angiogenesis is inhibited by cementum. I didn't know this until I read a little more about it. I thought it was kind of cool. This keeps osteoclasts from getting too close to that surface to initiate that process of the breakdown of the cementum. When you're removing teeth that exhibit signs of resorption, always be prepared for them to break. So you're going to be typically dealing with a surgical extraction in these cases. You might even want to plan it that way from the beginning to try to get that tooth out in one piece if you possibly can. Now, when you're trying to elevate a tooth and it has a resorptive defect like the one that we show here, you want to try to elevate in the area that has the most tooth structure first. Now, it's a minimal difference, but if you can have enough tooth there to hold up, Sometimes you can get it moving a bit before it fractures away on you and you've made your life a heck of a lot easier when you're trying to get the rest of that fragment out if it's already got some mobility to it.